من رواية أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الله لا أحب عبد نادى دعا جبريل فقال إني أحب فلانا فأحبه فيحبه جبريل ثم ينادي جبريل في السماء أن الله يحب فلانا فأحبه فيحبه الناس أو فيوضع له القبول في الأرض وإن الله إذا أبغض عبدا The first part of this hadith is the theme of the khutbah of last week that when Allah loves someone He calls upon Jibreel telling him that Allah so and so so loves him so Jibreel loves him and then he calls in the heavens that Allah loves so and so so loves him and then love is placed in the hearts of the people on earth for him. The second half of this hadith وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ إِلَىٰ أَبْغَضَ عَبْدًا دَعَى جِبْرِيلٍ فَقَالَ إِنِّي أُبْغِضُ فُلَانٍ فَأَبْغِضُهُ When Allah hates a person, He calls upon Jibreel and says, I hate so and so. We ask Allah's protection from being amongst those who are hated by Allah. Allah tells Jibreel, I hate so and so, so hate him. So Jibreel hates him. And then Jibreel makes a call in the heavens that Allah hates so and so. So the angels in the heavens hate him. And then hatred is placed on earth in the hearts of people. Just like when you see someone, at times you feel too close. There are other times when you meet people whom you've never met before. But you feel something, you feel a barrier between you and them. When Allah hates a slave, people resent him, not knowing why, but it's placed in their hearts by Allah. We spoke about how to earn the love of Allah. It's worth mentioning things that Allah dislikes or hates or lead to the hatred of Allah Azza wa Jal in order for us to avoid them. And beware not to be amongst such people. One quality is injustice and wrongdoing. Inna Allah la yuhibbu al-zalimeen. Allah does not love those who are unjust and wrongdoers. Injustice. As the Prophet ﷺ defined it is of three types. And this is reported by Al-Bazzar, classified as authentic, as sound by Al-Albani. He said, injustice or wrongdoing is of one of three. One or a type that Allah will never forgive. And a type that Allah will forgive. And a type which Allah will not leave unattended or unsettled. And then he defines, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, as for the one or the type which Allah will never forgive, is shirk. As Allah says in the Quran, Inna shirka la ghulmun azim. Indeed, associating with Allah is great injustice. It is the
the worst type of injustice anyone can do. The second type is the one that Allah will forgive. It is that which is between the slave and his Lord. The wrongdoings, meaning the sins the slave commits. And that is forgiven by Allah Azza wa Jal by virtue of good deeds, by virtue of calamities that befall the believer. There are many things that can result in these wrongdoings or injustice to oneself to be forgiven. The third type that cannot be left unsettled, unsettled is the one that is between the slave and other people. Then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah inna Allah la yada. Allah will not leave it unattended until he takes the rights of people. Meaning give them their due right for whatever injustice that was practiced against them in dunya but by others. And this is a very dangerous type. That's why the Prophet said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari, Whoever has wronged his brother, practiced any injustice against him with regards to his honor or wealth, then let him settle it with him now. Before a time will come when things are not going to be by means of dirham or dinar, his rewards will be taken from him, from him and they will be given to the one whom he wronged. And this injustice can be done against your wife, against your child against your parents, against your husband. Make sure you settle these accounts. Close them before you die. Come to terms with those whom you practice injustice with or those whom you wronged before it's too late. Transgression. Allah does not like the transgressors. And Imam Sa'di, Rahmatullah, he said in his tafsir, he said this refers to going beyond the boundaries and limits in any matter. This can be done against oneself. Some people thinking mistakenly that it's extra devotion and commitment to Islam, so they make things prohibited for themselves, which are lawful. This happened during the time of the Prophet ﷺ in the famous narration with the three companions. One of them said, I will sleep, I will not sleep at night and continuously pray. The young one say, said, I will never marry, and one said, I will perpetually fast. And then the Prophet ﷺ guided them, redirected them to the right path, and told them that he is the most pious and most fearful of Allah Azzawajal, but he sleeps and he wakes up to pray. He fasts and he breaks the fast at times, and he marries. So this is a transgression one can practice against his own self. There is a transgression that a lot of people fall in with regards to others. Someone wrongs him or her. Now, when they go to take their rights back, they take an extra step. They go beyond what they're deserving. Right? Now, this is transgression. You right is X, don't take X plus one. Because you will be faulty at this moment. Limit yourself to your right. And don't go beyond the limit. 
But this is human nature and inclination. Especially when there is anger involved, it becomes revenge rather than just simply taking your rights back. Hating the Ansar, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, from the Ansar in particular. There is a text in the book of Imam al-Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ said, only hypocrites hate the Ansar. And whoever hates them, Allah will hate him. And Yet you see many deviant people who curse them, who rule them to be disbelievers, who left Islam after the death of the Prophet ﷺ. What a deviation from the right path this can be. When the Prophet ﷺ says only hypocrites hate them, One thing that a lot of us do, unintentionally or unaware of it, be it something that's not liked by Allah Azza wa Jalla. Yawning. But it's not yawning itself, it's how you yawn. The Prophet says, and this is in the book of Imam al-Bukhari, he said, Allah dislikes or does not love yawning. It is from the devil. So when one of you yawns, let him suppress it as much as he possibly can. Because when he yawns and he makes a sound, and that's the point here. People make oh, this sound that comes with the... They just let it come out. He said when one does so, the devil laughs at him. Al-Khattabi rahmatullahi alayhi explained it. He said it is dispraised because usually yawning reflects laziness and it happens usually also when someone is really full and therefore it can prevent him from performing virtuous deeds and at times even obligations. Brothers, please come forward. Come, come forward. We have many brothers who are standing in the back and sitting outside. <coughs> Exaggeration. Extravagant behavior in different matters. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is in the book of Imam al Bukhari Allah hates three things for you. Qila wa qal. Qila wa qal is talking too much or conveying. Everything one hears, and it becomes worse when one conveys it without ascertaining authenticity of what he is conveying, which happens so often on social social media. You get messages after messages in Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, so on, so on, Twitter, right? And you see things that are so inauthentic that it's pathetic. It reads nice. So the brother or the sister emotionally becomes ready to just convey, not knowing what he's saying or conveying. And it also refers to talking about matters that, are, that do not concern the person. The second thing is being extravagant in the manner you spend your money. Now, 
Being wasteful is something that Allah particularly mentioned in the Quran. Inna Allah la yuhibbul musrifi. Allah does not like those who are wasteful when they spend. Now we're not talking about Allah as Allah disliking or not loving or hating someone when he spends his money on haram. This goes without questioning. We're talking about someone being extravagant and wasteful in lawful manners. See, being wasteful, that is this phrase, and which Allah Azza wa does not love, is when you are wasteful in lawful matters. The third thing that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned of these three, Asking too much. Now the scholar said this can mean one of two things. Asking people for money when you're not in need. And it can also refer to asking too many questions, too many detailed questions to the point that it makes it difficult for the person. He makes it hard on himself. He keeps, and I get this a lot. Some people ask, and then you give them an answer. It's, okay, so what if this, and okay, what if that? Leave it until it happens and then ask. That's why the Prophet ﷺ used to say to the companions, Leave me, don't ask me. As long as I don't mention something to be prohibited, don't ask. Because what happens is that eventually the person will reach a point when he asks about things and he get a, gets an answer and then he cannot act upon it. But he will not be acting upon it knowing that it's haram. Going into too, too many micro details in asking Questions. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. There are people when they have a dispute with others, they get they go way too far. They become extreme in their enmity. And this is something that is not loved by Allah, it's hated. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is in the book of Imam al-Bukhari, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِضُ الْخَصِمَ الْأَلَدْ أَوْ أَلَدْ الْأَلَدْ الْخَصِمِ Allah hates one who is extreme in his uh, enmity and who is very argumentative. He is willing to go way too far to prove what is wrong as the truth. And he argues and argues and argues. Now this is something that is hated by Allah. As a matter of fact, it's one of the qualities of hypocrites, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. It's nice to know things around you and be acquainted with what goes on, developments in different fields, right? But when this is on the account of your knowledge and awareness of your faith, then it becomes something that is hated by Allah. Al-Bayhaqi reports and it's classified as authentic by Al-Albani. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah hates every arrogant, boastful person who is very knowledgeable with regards to worldly affairs and ignorant with regards to the matters of the hereafter. It is so sad that you talk, at times talk to some people, very intelligent people, very smart, very advanced in their fields. And they're very impressive when they talk. 
But what's sad and pathetic is that you can ask him about the names of the battles the Prophet ﷺ fought, or the names of the daughters of the Prophet ﷺ. And you'll go blank. You can ask him what are the pillars of salah. Now this is essential. Because this can deem your prayer to be void. He will not know. But when you talk to him about IT, medicine, engineering, sports, art, whatever, He's ready. He has updates on everything. Now this type is hated by Allah Again, Al-Wayhaqi reports and it is classified as authentic by the Prophet by Al-Albani Rahmatullah alayhi. The Prophet said, Allah hates low manners and hates when a person busies himself with trivial and insignificant matters. Two, three weeks ago, social media amongst Muslims, I don't deal with non-Muslims, went berserk, went crazy because a Muslim athlete won a fight and it became it it was as if we're talking about the battle of Badr and the merits of Islam were spoken about might and honor of a Muslim was spoken about we're talking about an athlete who played to win and make money people went way outraged speaking about this and gave it much much more than its actual weight we're not going to talk about the sport itself and the ruling of that sport but we're talking about how people became so preoccupied about this trivial insignificant matter when I am sure that Many of these people hardly pray. And those who pray probably don't pray the young. You see the comparison here. This is something that is not loved by Allah. It is hated by Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal hates immorality and vulgarness and obscenity in speech. And this is the words of the Prophet وسلم, as reported by al bayhaqi classified as authentic by al albani Some people find it cool to be obscene, to be nasty. They feel that it's manly to use such terms or words, right? They feel that they're head to head with the West, you know? I can say these things. As a matter of fact, I know the meaning of many nasty words which many people don't. SubhanAllah. Since when was this a criteria? or a scale with which a person is weighed and his status is ranked. This is something that is hated by Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about the qualities of a true believer, he's not immoral in action or words. And he's not obscene when he speaks. These are some qualities, deeds, 
that are hated by Allah Azza wa Jal, which we ought to be aware of and stay as far as possible from it. So we do not lose the love of Allah on one hand, and we do not incur the hatred and wrath of Allah Azza wa Jal on the other. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to protect us. We take refuge in Him from being hated by Him. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma aghfir lana warhamna. Aafina wa'afu anna. Thabit aqdamana.